Counselor Accents Podcast. Two school counselors who love their jobs. Oh, and they happen to have Southern accents too. Bless their hearts. I'm Laura Rankhorn. And I am Kim Crumbly. And together we are Counselor Accents. Uh, happy birthday to you. Uh, you may shove it. <laughs> I was expecting a wake up birthday call from you. Which did not happen, and so once you get the uh, obligatory happy birthday from your dentist and your bank, and you come in after the, that, uh, uh-uh, that shows me where I stand with you. So well, I knew that everyone, all of your fans, your bank and your dentist included, would be <laughs> like I just didn't want to be in with the mix of all those people. So that's why I waited. Until everybody else had gotten it out of the way and forgotten about you. And I held on to you and thought about you all day. Thinking all day long, just, just thinking about me. You're such a, such a liar. But let me just say this. Uh, I will say that you did call and say happy birthday. And I have you a present. And the present you're trying to give me back is the massager that I bought at Aska several months ago that you took home with you. And at this point, I don't even want to, I don't even know where that thing's been. So just keep it. I would like to say this though. The whole time we were there, you prided yourself. I don't know if, is that past tense appropriate? You prided yourself on the fact that you packed basically into a cosmetic bag. You packed all of your things. It It is. I grew up with who can pack the smallest bag and go and. That is true. So I had no way to bring it home. I had to put it in your 12 12 bags. Because I don't live under those limitations. And then who has to help you at airports? Who has to help you bring home your massager? We help each other. Okay. We help each other. I am sick to my stomach thinking about another trip and 12 bags of luggage. I'm sick of it. I'm going to pack an extra little bag in my luggage for extras. Finally. Now I don't have to pack 12 bags. I can take it down to 11. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, uh, have, have you had a good weekend? I have had a good weekend. Uh, I have travel plans for... That was my birthday. Travel is my favorite thing to do. And in a cosmetic bag. In a cosmetic bag. And it would be your favorite thing to do if packing were not so stressful for you. And that's, I'm going to do a blog and an infograph and a video and various things to how to pack. You, you do really well with your packing. That and is, the reason I had to pack so much was because you make me so nervous because when we go places I don't know how you do it I don't know where you're pulling these outfits out from it's like but, mad. but you are so the boss when we go somewhere that like I'm thinking back to when we went to Boston I didn't wow. know what to expect in Boston next thing I know we've walked 12 miles all over the city and all I had to bring to wear were flip-flops So I walked 12 miles in flip-flops. So I thought never again will I be caught walking 12 miles in flip-flops. I will never, never be caught is what she thought. I am never going to be unprepared. So this time I packed in case we work out, in case we go go to a formal Right. If we go to a formal event, if we go, I had an outfit for every whim that you might take me on. Plus cowboy hat and cowboy boots. So dress up. But I managed to pack appropriately in one bag and literally a small bag at that. I did it. And I do, I do, it is a source of pride. It's hilarious. It is hilarious that that is the big thing with my family. Like there's some kind of sin if you have that extra bag. For know. a prize at the end of the trip if you've managed to make it. Well, when I look back, I can remember vacation. You know, this is before the SRVs and the... You know, the big SRV. Is that not like an SR, you know, like a a vehicle, the new kind of vehicle? Is that not an SRV that has the big, you know, what everybody drives now? Not a SUV? SUV? (laughs) My 
UV was an SRX. That's okay. what's kind of listed. So I do get those confused if that's an excuse at all. So back in the day, you know, when kids didn't have to have seat belts and you could just put 20 people in the back seats, it didn't matter. We all went in the car. Then I don't know how we did it. So that must be where it comes from. Just a leftover 20 people in a vehicle. Yeah. Before, before SRVs. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So Laura, we went through a grueling, a grueling uh process. Yes. And that process is your colonoscopy. No. It's another it's a four-letter word though, and it is ramp. Oh. And we are just going to uh give you the good, bad, and the ugly, if you will. But when it's all over, we're going to call this giving birth. During the process, it it, you're thinking, why am I doing this? But when it's over, it's like, ah, this is wonderful. This is a game changer. This is look at this. So was that would that be how you describe it? I would say I remember when we hit the submit button, you hit it before I did. And I I called you the next morning because, of course, I squeezed every ounce, every last minute out of that deadline. So I called you the next morning and I had expected to feel some kind of a weight lift off my shoulders when I hit the submit button, some kind of relief. And it was not there. And and when you do have a baby, there is a minute of relief where you're like, oh, my goodness, this is great. So I did not have that when I hit submit where I was like. Oh, it's done. I just thought, oh my gosh, there's no going back. There's no going back now. Uh, So today we're going to do, uh, I think we're going to call this our top six reasons to ramp. And so we'll just back and forth with this, Laura, maybe six things you learned, six things that you wish you knew. And this is really off of the cuff. Okay. So we're just going to back and forth, if you will. Oh, we have not talked about it. We have we not. I don't know not, what we've not really celebrated yet, but we are going to celebrate. And I am looking at ball gowns. I'm going to be honest right now. And I am looking at gowns to wear ceremonial wise, if you will. Well, we should have worn one during this podcast, number one. And number two, I can't wait to see what size your luggage is going to be. Oh-hoo! Tiny luggage, tiny gown, tiny person. Hear yeah. my heart. Yeah, I hear you. And uh, that is all, one reason. With all due respect. With all, with due, all due respect, that is why I need 12 bags. There is so much more of me. I, I did. I saw it. I hear it now. And I want to apologize. Thank you. Okay. So we, to begin with, Laura, the journey for this has been quite a journey. And let me just say, it was not my first rodeo. I started the process a couple of years ago, unsuccessfully, and I will say that it was a horrific, horrific year. My son was in the hospital for a long time. I'm making excuses. We had the pandemic, so it never really got where it needed to be, to be rant worthy, if you will. But it was a lot of work. But even in that, it was worth it. So even if you're doing the process, even if it's not to ramp or you don't get ramp, it is worth it to go through, I think. So takeaway number one, is that your takeaway number one? Uh, yes, it, I'm going, it was an intro, but I think it is a good takeaway. Takeaway one is whether you achieve ramp or not, it is going to to show you where your program is, what you need to do, where you can go, and it will help kind of shore that up. So whatever the end result is, it is worth a try. Takeaway well, one. I think, I think that whole, we'll call it round one, that whole round one really opened our eyes from doing things just on a whim, doing things uh, because that's the direction we wanted to go to doing things with a purpose. I think it, it gave a purpose to what we were doing. And I think if I may 
say that's number two, Laura, for you. If I could give the words to that is it gives a purpose. Okay. It gives a purpose to the program. You can no longer, and, and I, I think that both of us are going to do what we're supposed to do, but it really, um, it really is a check system for yourself to see, am I really doing uh, this the correct way? Or is there, am I thinking this through? So that, that I think the purpose is, is, is number two. Okay. Purpose. Is my number two or, or am I taking that from you? That's yours, correct? Well, I think, don't you think we're doing these together? I need you to let me do mine. You do yours. We're not going to do 12. We're not doing 12. We're doing six, three and three. What part of that did you not understand? This is well, why you really didn't get ramped. This is why you really didn't. You're just acting like you did. Uh, so, um, number one, it's worth a try. Number two, it gives purpose. Number three, um, I think it really, because you have to be, you have to explain the whys. I think it really gives more direction. You're pulling more direction from your data than may you may have in the past because you are literally looking at graphs harder than you've ever looked at or, or more accurately. You're seeing why there's growth or lack of growth. So I number three for me is just the data part of it. Looking at data with a closer eye. Are okay. You so can you explain no. can you explain that one a little bit more? Yeah. So in the past, we've always been data driven. But when you're going through um ramp, you are choosing your goals and then you are monitoring that progress and that outcome and that data pretty daggum closely because that's the whole enchilada, if you will. You've put your goals out there. This is how I'm going to measure whether I'm successful or not. And you're really having, and since you're not just answering to yourself and maybe you're just your principal or whatever, you're answer, you're, you've got somebody, a, a team looking at this. So you're looking at it with a, I guess, a keener eye as to, did I really, you know, what could I have done to have better met this? goal or looked at this so you're looking at your data I guess with the eye to other people are looking at this with me okay so point number four are we ready for point number four yeah go yes okay. you I would, you I would say to the person that is saying where do I start what do I do I would recommend that you get the ASCA national model implementation guide you can get that from um, ASCA, the ASCA website. Uh, make sure that it's the second edition and it's aligned with the fourth model, the fourth edition of the ASCA national model. But it is the it explains the how to with what we're supposed to do. So we know that we're supposed to have a mission statement and a vision statement, but this book helps you understand how to make it work for you. And I think, I don't know if we want to make that four and a half, but these are the things that you as a counselor, you're already doing these things. This is just documenting that you're doing them. So why not get recognition for doing what you're already doing? Um, that's what I've been telling people. They're like, oh, congratulations. And I'm like, I'm just doing what an effective counselor already does. I just turn in the paperwork to verify that I'm doing it. Um and I think one of the things, Laura, when I had just gone through monitoring, state monitoring, you're getting ready to do state monitoring. Uh, and so when to get ready for state monitoring, that was when I decided, yeah, I mean, because I said, no, there's no time. I don't have time because it is. I will say uh, the cautionary thing is here. Allow time. It, I almost felt like it was an extra college course. I mean, it is it is a lot. But if you're getting, I was getting ready for state monitoring and I thought I've got to have all of these pieces for state monitoring anyway. So I did it after because I had, uh, had shored up all this stuff and you are 
got to get yours in so you have it already. So that was an extra little bonus for both of us because it fell in between state monitoring too. Yes. Number five, if you it are, un- it is my turn. You, you did four in a row. Then, are you're you done. kidding me right now? You are, are you done, done with your three? That was starting me four. four. Starting I back guess. with one. Starting back with one. I did It's Worth the Try. You did Purpose. I did data. No, and no, did you hijacked purpose. You took I that one. You were you like, I'm going to make this number two. This is why we have to talk about these things before we go on air. This is your two. This is your two. Like my one was worth trying. You said, is that your one? I said, yes. That's why I was like, is that your two? And yes. I was expounding on your one. And you were like, if I may, I'd like, like to roll it back and listen. We will. I, right now. So you may. Close your orifice right now. I'm going to make this seven. I go in. Seven takeaways. I am so angry right now. I'm giving you an extra. I refute your extra. (laughs) I am taking my (laughs) God-given right. And I will say that. Here it is. What number are we on? (laughs) Have someone look at this with you because now I know that Laura, a lot of states already have you go through the state and then it you're automatically ran. A lot in some states do not, and some states do. Some states are going to that, and then there's the, just these programs that are out there that will help you, like um, Matt Flex. What's what is his? Netflix program called I think it's some kind of boot camp and then you have scooed us you just just whatever you decide to do I think the state route's a good route to go uh if your state does that but if not do not trust yourself somebody else is going to look at this and say because do you remember Laura Cindy Davis was our person and she'd send it back and it was like we were in third grade with the big red Uh, crayon marked all over everything we had done wrong and we were like how did we miss that yeah it would be comparing errors like what is she doing I don't know who these rant reviewers are hello god love you because what kind of eagle eye must y'all are geniuses way beyond what we'll ever be capable of okay so I don't even know if it's my turn if it's your turn if I don't know whose turn it is Right now, if it's a ramp reviewer's turn, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm going to take it just in case. And I don't I'm know what number this for is. It. Number 25. Takeaway number 25. Um, mm. If you're not sure if you want to tackle this or not, I would say try it. Like act as if. That's the therapeutic technique. Act as if you're going to ramp. Print off the rubric. Get the book. And go through it as if you're going to ramp this year and just practice. And then at the end of the year, you either have all of your documentation and you'll be ready to do it, or you've learned what it takes to ramp and you'll be ready the next year to do it for real. So either pretend like this is your dress rehearsal year or just really go for it. Okay. So number 30 is, (laughs) I would say, um, Remember, and this was this was an, a learning moment for you and me, and a really hard, a really hard lesson, I guess, to learn. Remember that you're looking at everything through the lens of attendance, academics, and discipline, and that was hard for you and me because we were like, we we don't do discipline, we're not in charge of discipline, but you're looking at how to affect discipline, at how to change it. So remember that um, your goals, a lot of your goals, your principal's goals, um, those are going to be, you're looking at small groups that you can do or lessons that you can do to drive those numbers down or up, depending on what your goal is. If it's attendance, you want that to increase. But of course, if it's discipline, you want that to go down. There is no better way to understand the ASCLA national model and, t- and 
a, a, there's just no better way than through ramp to understand it because when you're actually having to take that close a look at closing the gap and that close a, a close of a look at uh, how everything kind of works together um it, it is just you know you can read it but until you're actually in that process of being that that taking that national model and implementing all the parts of that that is the greatest way to learn it and ASCA has things to help you and like I said a lot of states now have things that will help you so so would you do it again? well yeah now that I've done it but if you ask me that mid um midway through and when, when you are got that back and it's like you did this, you know, you're not looking at your numbers correctly or, you know, then I would probably say, why am I doing this? But, but uh, even no matter what, even just looking at the process, I think helps you understand and learn. And well, let me say this, whenever you said, when you get your, uh, you get it back and somebody says your numbers are wrong, which goes back to your point before where you said, have somebody look at this with you. Um, we were doing the math in a different way than what we thought we were supposed to be looking at it as. And so that's what you're talking about. But even if you do your small group and your pre-test is better than your post-test, your post-test doesn't show any growth or doesn't show right. whatever, that doesn't matter. You're not being judged on whether or not it was effective. You are being judged on the documentation and, you know, you may have to do a write-up or an addendum that goes with it to say, you know, I, I see that this, this is what I what learned. This yeah. is what I did differently. Yeah. But it's and, not, don't worry if you set your attendance goal at 100% and, oh, look, you've actually got an 80% attendance rate. You did the things, you set your goal and, you know, you work towards that goal. That's what they're looking at. Really good experience. A lot of hard work, a lot harder than I thought it would be. I wish I had audio recording of the nasty things that you said to me during the process and to hear you say, it's a really great it's experience. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Uh, like you said, it's just when you're giving birth, you are cussing and uh, you are besides you and you're, you know, pulling your husband's hair out. But then it's like, oh, look. So that is really the best way to describe this process. It is not easy. And remember, this is your school's ramping. So your program and a lot of schools have more than one counselor. So you you're, you would be doing this process. You know, you might have that where you have other people in your school and there's more than one counselor. So that mm -hmm. I think would be easier to me. That would be easier. They've probably going, no, it's not any easier, but. Because you both have to submit your paperwork, so. Yes, but it's looking at the program. So if together, there's right. two of together, or three, or four, at the time, I remember thinking that would have, if, if you were and I were at the same school with the same goal, yeah, that would have been easier. But they will keep everyone abreast of our award ceremony, which should be hilarious, as is everything that we do. For real. What are you eating? I stop eating sneakers. I am, you know, it's Halloween. Well, and it's time to buy the everywhere you see the big bags of candy. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in my mind, I'm buying the candy just to have it, uh, you know, okay, it's not even, you know, time for this yet, but I'm going to start storing up. I live in a rural area. I may have one trick or treater, but just in case, this is that year. I'm I know that I'm subconsciously buying it so I can just eat it because I know it's in there. So October is the hardest month. Well, actually the three months leading up to October because they put the stuff out there. They do. Yeah. What am I going to do when a whole bag of every kind of sneakers made, which there is almond sneakers, peanut sneakers, and peanut butter sneakers, and I've got to sample all of them. It well, just, then, right after Halloween comes like the whole Christmas candy. 
And that's when they have just skipped right over Thanksgiving. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not. But the commercial people, they skip over it. And that's what I'm saying. They put the Christmas candy out. Thanksgiving's my favorite. I would never skip over it. But they put the candy out. It's the Christmas get togethers. It's the Christmas. It's always something, you know. And then right when you get your act together, here comes Valentine's Day. And I'm just. I've, uh, yes. So I have opened up the bag of sneakers and just thought I'd t- it's looking at me. So I had to take a little bit of nibble of the nougat, if you would. Well, I'm still on that kick of making the um, copycat crumble cookies. So I made I'm another batch. Been I, not- I made another batch last night in honor of your birthday. And I have to make myself stop. They are so good. Cause I don't know if you know this or not, but crumble brought their pink sugar cookie back with a new and improved recipe and maybe some people love it but I would prefer the old and unimproved recipe so since that's the recipe that I have the old and unimproved that's what I'm making the new and improved I don't know I didn't I didn't care for it And how hard would that have been to ran that over to me for my birthday think about that in your heart you don't have to say anything out loud just think about in your heart mm-hmm. what the it, but but in all honesty and fairness I did go to Edgar's Bakery I don't know if you are listening have an Edgar's Bakery which I know crumble cookie is your favorite but no, I like a wedding cookie I like a good wedding cookie from Edgar's so I went by and got me cupcakes cinnamon rolls wedding cookies I would prefer Edgar's over crumble cookie I did not. I would have never bet that. So anyway, had me had me a a taste a taste of us for a birthday all day long. It was just eat, 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 and I'm still in that mode, if you will. Well, you deserve it. It Thank was your you. birthday, and you can get back on track in May. After the Cadbury eggs go away and yes. you made it through plan. all the seasons. Yeah. That's my plan. That's that's my plan right there. Mm. You've got a ball gown to fit into. Oh, that may be my, that may be my motivation right there. All right. Three sizes smaller than what you would normally wear, which would that's be. Com- that's good sense right there. That'd be, yes, that's good sense right there. That's what I'm going to do. I'm sure I if can- I open my Noom app, that's what it would tell me to do. Why am I paying them when now. I can be paying you? Exactly. I can see it now, though, that we're there <laughs> trying on our dresses that look like sausage casings because we bought them three dress, three sizes too small. I can see it. As you know, the story of my dress popping loose during a pageant Please. because in the South, hell, that story to be in a pageant. Which I look at now and I shake my head and I think, my goodness, what were we thinking? But anyway, it was the 80s. It was big hair. It was glitter. And uh, so I have a dress that I have been forbidden to w- I have to wear puff sleeves, then a high collar. And if I could show a picture of that look. So I had a friend who had this green dress strapless. With my red hair, I thought this is going to be stunning, and it was. And so right when I'm about to go on stage, it bust open, bust open. And so I am just holding it together as I cross over and just trying to hold it together and and I actually have a video of this and it is hilarious because I am, I am like, have this, I'm like, what the heck? I mean, after this happens and you're holding yourself together, you might as well have a good time with it. So I'm just like, you know, just kind of entertaining myself as I'm thinking about this. Of course I do go on to win. Congratulations. This past, uh, but that, that was a story that everybody in the school enjoyed because everybody knew, you know how they'll come up to you and hug you after it's over. Uh-huh. And the home ec teacher finally came up and kind of sewed me back in because, you know, we had to finish this thing out. And uh, so I would not let anybody come near me. No, you know, I was like, no, 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 don't touch me. Don't touch me. I'm going to come out of this thing. 
that may be what I want. I don't know. Well, you know, what's funny is whenever I was, we were working in the same school system, I was fairly new and I had to call you about something. And I said, I'm going to call Kim Crumley because she, she can help me with this. So I called you as a brand new baby puppy. I called you and this was back before you knew that you loved me and whoever I was talking to said, Kim Crumley, well, you know, the time she fell out of her dress at the pageant. And (laughs) I was like, what? And so I was told the whole story before you even got the chance. I did not know that. I did not know that. But it was, I cannot tell you there, the amount of hilarity, because there was probably 40 girls in this pageant, I guess. And so it was a packed gym with all their mama, grandma, everybody. And it was just, it was just the funniest thing that that should happen. It, it, it just, I don't know. It was just funny. It was just, I just really can't funny. think of anybody better for that to happen to, because if that happened to 99.9% <laughs> of people, they would be horrified and never would see the light of day again. But you, you might look, I always say, if you've embarrassed yourself, the worst thing you can do is is just seep into that embarrassment. The best thing you can do is to own it. Think about all the numerous things that could happen to a person that's mortifying and you just own it and enjoy the laugh and then you're laughing with and instead of being laughed at. So and that is takeaway number seven. If you don't get laugh, <laughs> laugh at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and the 20 times that we applied for RAM, we had last 20 times. Hilarity. Yeah. All yeah. Hilarity. Look what. Rarely, rarely in life would do, because I mean, most, if you think about it, everybody has stuff that has embarrassed them. So it's not like it's not uh, common to the human condition. So you might as well enjoy it. If it happens to you or happens to somebody else, enjoy it to the fullest. Never let a busted dress go. Never let wasted. a busted dress go wasted, or any other numerous things that can happen to you. That is a good life lesson. Okay, we'll tackle that week with um, bring on the embarrassment. I say, and let's laugh about it. Yeah, if anybody has any embarrassing stories, we would love to hear. We would love. To I've hear. got a plenty, a plethora in, of in embarrassing. Fact, there is a way on, if you go to our podcast hosting site, Anchor, then you can actually record a message and send it to us. And if you want us to, if you do that, then we can share your embarrassing moment on an upcoming podcast. And I think that would be so funny. It would be. And you know, it just kind of that, that common bond that, it, I, you know, because I guarantee you something, if not that very thing, something, everybody has something that they're like, I cannot believe Yeah, happened. And it's, you know. So this could be a therapeutic process for somebody out there who did seep into that embarrassment. Share it with us and let us air it to our the listeners. world, the world. And um, this could be a, this could help you break out of that embarrassment. Absolutely. Okay, well, you can join us on Facebook. You can uh, follow us on Instagram. You can watch these on YouTube. Um, We would love it, as we have said the past few weeks, and you guys have been so gracious to do it, and we appreciate it so much. We would love it if you would rate and review, because when you do that, it helps other people find this podcast, and heaven knows that there are other school counselors out there that need to know what not to do by listening to us. help them find us and what else do we have that's about it isn't it have a good week